Okay, this one, thanks Deb for this article. It's, uh, I was slightly shocked actually. So I'm gonna take you through a little imagination process. Imagine a time before the C-section <laughs> <laughs> in the 1800s Ooh. to be specific. You're coming towards the end of a long labor and something happens. The baby gets stuck. Now, because this is the 1800s, there's no C-section. <laughs> <laughs> so what do they do? <laughs> well, back in the day, they, get butter? they used to use yeah. a knife and saw pieces of pe- of the woman's pelvic bone out ah. to try and make more space for the baby to pass through the pelvis. But that was painful. <laughs> and uh, No shit! They used and- a knife to cut out bone. Yes, and was, it was slow. That was our hour. And it was very messy. Did they survive this? So, I didn't say, but I would suspect that a fair chunk didn't. Um, now, the doctors at the time uh, became inventors, and they created a tool to assist in this procedure. Um, and I'll give you one guess as to what that tool is now known as in today's modern era well i've seen the story so i'm not gonna guess okay don't you guess <laughs> forceps nope i'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> a chainsaw the chainsaw that we use today to cut through wood and trees and bushes was originally created by doctors to Use on women yeah. during labor. During labor, it gives the. It uh, was, however, it feels like a very manly invention, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it gives the uh, the chainsaw massacre a different ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> the chainsaw was invented yeah. in 1780. It be, it was a quick, quick way to cut through the bone to give the baby more space. Um, it was quite small. It was powered by a hand crank. Um, oh, yeah. and there is a picture of it. It looked like a modern day kitchen knife, but with little teeth on a chain that wound around in an oval. Um, but it looked less scary and more medical than um, the uh, today's. It's not about chainsaw. less scary. I mean, it's it looks scary a little bit scary still. <laughs> but because it was so, so efficient. They, hold on. They would insert this chainsaw where the woman's, woman's pelvic bone is. Isn't there a possibility of them hitting the baby as well? Possibly, See, you know. But I guess it was. It would be where the baby got because they were only taking out uh, portions of the pelvis. Pelvis. So I don't know. I mean, they're doctors, but I don't know. Sounds like they're butchers, not doctors. <laughs> you know, but they used to be these, called uh, butchers. Uh, on these articles, like at the bottom, there's always a bunch of adverts for pictures. Yeah. Under mine, the first one is a guy pushing a what do you call it? A casket into like a furnace. Very, oh, very no. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Well, because they were so effective at cutting through that through bone, they then developed the the chainsaw. Well, then they went on to be used for amputations and operations, um, and then it evolved into woodworking tools. And because oh, there was it was man. so effective, it grew larger, grew more powerful. Any time, I'm just um. So what? So the from going from the pelvis for the birth. Did they actually put a motor on it? When did the motor go on? I don't know, because it was hand crank at first. So I'm not sure when they put the motor on. So <coughs> so they would insert the chainsaw or and go... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah basically. So and it was imagine called... Imagine in the late 1800s, they started putting motors on everything. 1800s. I was going to say, wouldn't it be easier just to get a saw and go... Mm. Well, that's what they did. In the Ven- yeah, was it? yeah. Yeah, it was called a sim a sim physiotomy, and they're no longer used. However, in certain <laughs> sections, <laughs> like, oh really? Thanks yeah. for no, that. in yeah. certain parts in third world countries where an operating room isn't available for cesarean sections, they, they are still, still carried it. out sometimes. Today, sometimes, but they're no longer performed in like the Western world, I guess. So if there's no um, if there's no electricity, 
You're getting a sword. Hand crank, maybe. I don't know. Don't don't need electricity for a chainsaw. Why, like, how? Why is child oh, work yeah. so hard? <laughs> yeah. But look, this is the picture, yeah. Dev. I'm assuming you're yeah. pushing out a big head from uh, not a big area. Mm. That area has to stretch. Why mm-hmm. are we designed like that? It seems so like because <laughs> well, humans no. are the worst at giving birth of all the animals. It's because no, 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 I not. have the answer to that. Actually, I think I think it's bulldogs. No, I actually the have heads the answer. Are too big to go through, so they have to get a cesarean. We've discussed this in a previous podcast, but through human evolution, our brains have got our heads have got bigger. Um, my head was always pretty big, but the pelvis bone has stayed the same because our heads have got bigger. Pelvis bone got he- smaller. Well, yeah, yes, that's right. And we so started our, standing on our two two feet. feet, and our heads got bigger because our well, brains that's... got bigger, and then those two oh. things don't quite. I thought the point of evolution was to be intelligent, not to like make things harder for us. <laughs> well, apparently, yes, it, but we were, it, it was more be beneficial intelligent. for us to stand on two feet than it was to have every single baby that comes out survive. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't want to saw my pelvis bone. No. No, but it's either that or the baby gets stuck, and then what happens? Do you reckon there's... But I guess he has to live, he has to live a... his life hanging out of your... <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Do you think there's ever been a more dramatic shift in tool repurposing? Oh, from childbirth to, uh, like, Well, that's a good locker. question. Mm. Wow. That I was a good a lot, article because um, I had probably no a lot. Lucas Aid wasn't Lucas Aid used to be for people that were sick in hospital, right? What? And now it's used for sport athletes. Yeah, but so was kind cigarettes. What? <laughs> I mean, what was Lucas Aid to cigarettes? No, cigarettes were given to people that were sick. No, initially. I don't know. And then really? I th- did I make well, I know that, that I know they were promoted then... by doctors. I know that. Yeah, they I were promoted. They, I don't know to if they were you. like prescribed, but. Yeah, I think they like some doctors. Yeah, there was a saying: a pack a day keeps a doctor away. No, okay. Is that a saying? No, it's not. It's not not (laughs) a saying. uh... (laughs) Do you know? Um, this isn't quite the same. But you know, I think I said this before: the sticky notes that you like stick on the wall or something. The glue for that was meant to be a super glue. It was meant to be a super glue, but it didn't work very well, and they they decided (laughs) it was so bad they now use it for sticky notes. No way! <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. yeah that's... Talking about super glue, knows. there was an incident. I've heard about this before. At my secondary school, high school, where a bunch of the kids got their hands on super glue, and and some of them super glued their eyes shut together. No. Do you remember that? Um, kids are hilarious. You weren't Sorry, there yet. What? <laughs> yeah. Kids are hilarious. <laughs> they were in my year. I think they were in my year. How would I remember? Emma, we never at any shut. point went to the same Like school. one of the girls super glued her eyes shut. The others had like super glue mishaps in different various parts of their body. But yeah. <laughs> I was, to be honest, like, I feel like I heard body. these stories and I was so scared of super glue as a result. But who like? I don't know. What? Hey, I don't know. Okay. Well. If this is how you know the, the week. If you're stupid enough to super glue your eyes shut. <laughs> You deserve to have your eyes shut. What did they use? Have the- I told you about the like the most stupid thing I'd done with my bathroom lock? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember what it was, Throwback. but you did tell us I the don't story. Remember so I'm like eight years old, and this is my like I guess my early engineering brain trying to. I'm really curious to see if something can work, and the thing that I want to know to work is like, can I lock my bathroom door whilst I'm not inside the bathroom? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, we've all tried that. So I tied way, a string. One, one minute warning. I tied a string to the lock. That no, like it was from my shorts or something. I pulled out that string that tightens <laughs> up the waistband. And then I tie one end around the lock and I close the door and I stand out. And I don't know what I was thinking. I can't recall it enough. But I'm assuming I was like, let's see if it moves a bit. And I pull. And I'm like, oh, it worked. And I'm like, oh. It worked. <laughs> and then I can't open the door and then me and my mum have to knock the door through. And then from then onwards, we never had a lock on uh, our bathroom and my brothers hated me for it. <laughs> but, but still, only four of us will know. Thing. You're just inquisitive. Maxi, only four of us will get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, was, I didn't get that joke. Oh. <laughs> me neither until you brought it up. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Yeah. Only one so of us two questions, that dirty man. Two questions your mum asked. Why is your um, pants around your ankles? And why is the toilet door locked? <laughs> 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 I was taking a shit. I can answer both of those. <laughs>